Today, a little girl's journey to heaven and back. Christy Bean is a firm believer in miracles because she's seen them unfold before her very eyes. Christy's sickly daughter, Annabelle, had a rough road to travel from a very young age. But through a fluke accident and a traumatic rescue, Annabelle had a miraculous encounter. Christy writes about Annabelle's journey in her book, Miracles from Heaven. The story received immediate attention from the producers of Heaven is for Real and is slated for an international film release in 2016. Christy and her husband, Kevin, live with Annabelle and her two sisters in Texas, here to share about the incredible goodness of God and the power of a childlike faith. Please help me welcome Christy D. Good to have you here. That is quite the line, a little girl's journey eh? yes. to heaven and back. So this, it's all in this book called Miracles from Heaven. Yes. And I want to encourage everyone to get it and just read through, because we're going to just touch on some of the things in the story today. And it's, it's an amazing story. Now, let's talk a little bit about your family and her sickness. Because okay. that had, what, what was it that, that you had? So there are two long words, um, pseudo-obstruction motility disorder and then antral hypomotility disorder. Can you spell them? No. Well, I can. I can. <laughs> I've written them yeah. so many times I can. But what that means is that her stomach as a muscle was weak and floppy, and the top of the stomach, it didn't um, have the ability to do this, and then the intestines didn't have the ability to take the food from the stomach and do this. So just the whole body didn't work correctly. Things didn't function. She couldn't eat and drink correctly. Um, she, had to, she was on 10 medications just to make her system run poorly at best. So painful? Oh, my goodness. She um, lived on a couch with a heating pad on her stomach in a fetal position, and she looked about the color of this furniture. She just was so in agony. In For her, years? Yes. So it started when she was about four. When she was five, she fully obstructed abdominally and had to have major surgery. We almost lost her then. She rallied back, and that's when we began chasing the diagnosis. And talk about the journey in the book and how we went through so many doctors, so many efforts, so much emotional turmoil to get to the diagnosis. So the first few years, like when did you, so you didn't even know there was a disease or these problems. It was just a little girl with stomach ache all the time. Exactly. The pediatric hospital in Dallas diagnosed it, and then um, Boston Children's Hospital um, diagnosed the antral hypomotility disorder. So you had the best hospitals, did. doctors, did. they went all out. We did. Annabelle and I used to fly to Boston every four to six weeks for her to see Dr. Samuel Nurko, and he was absolutely an angel. So uh, what would it look like now that you've got a diagnosis? Um, your book says she was on like this massive list of meds. Was she able to hold any food down? Was, was she still in, like, did it solve anything? Um, it made it work poorly at best. So what that meant was she could eat like bland foods. She could never eat anything like pizza or french fries or chicken nuggets. Um, it was always just real bland and then it was small amounts. Oftentimes she would just be so starving and then she would take one or two bites and say, I'm full. You know, it's not worth it. It wasn't worth the pain. It wasn't worth the agony that a meal, the weight of a meal in her stomach would give her. We have a sweet video and we talk about it in the book on Christmas how Annabelle got um, candy in her stocking and she gave it to her daddy and she said here daddy you have candy for Christmas um, it's not worth it for me and it just was oh I still look at that video and it <laughs> breaks my heart Wow now how many other children do you have we have two other girls an older daughter Abigail and a young younger daughter Adeline Adeline so how did this affect them like talk to me a little bit about your family life because when I've noticed that when people have a daughter or a son that is not well it affects the whole wow. family, and not wonderfully, like negatively. Oh, Abby was um, becoming the mom position, and, um, you know, Adeline was looking for a mom, because I was always gone with Annabelle. I was in Boston, I was in hospitals, I was in doctor's offices, I was at home, they would be at preschool or school, and so Anna, Adeline looked up to Abby for mom, and Abby took over mom. And we were just in constant chaos and turmoil. So I'm trying to be mom to two girls that I'm rarely seeing. Mm, and that'd be heartbreaking. it was heartbreaking. And, and then feeling like a failure because I couldn't make Anna well. I couldn't fix that problem. What do moms go through? Is there like, I mean, you couldn't do anything. You must know that with your head, but still you feel helpless. Do you feel guilt, shame? Oh, or? you know, I felt 
I felt guilty because I felt like I was failing Abby because she didn't deserve to be in that lead mommy role. I was failing Adeline because she deserved her mommy. And I felt like I, in a way, failed Kevin because I couldn't keep this whole train together. Yeah, you got your marriage, you got your other children, you got your regular home life. It's all irregular. All of it. And I just felt um, alone at times. I felt, you know, this doesn't seem real. This can't be happening to me. Um, and I just felt challenged. But I, I always felt like God was with me. He guided me. He directed me. And I knew he was there, even though at times there was silence. So how were you, so you were a Christian. Mm -hmm. How were you raised with the topic of miracles? Because the book's about a miracle. Yes. Was that something like, there's different beliefs across the Christian spectrum. You know, there's some that it's always going to happen, others that it's all over, and others is kind of hit and miss. What was your thinking back then? Well, I was raised that there were miracles. Um, they were just few and far between. Right. And I know that Kevin was raised that miracles happen daily. They happen in his, in his family. They would encounter miracles, you know, um, through others and through healings and stuff. It was a very real, tangible experience in his life growing up. So when I met him, it, w it became kind of a new understanding, a new world. Unfortunately, in my mind, I was so closed off, um, I didn't even think Annabelle could be healed. They well, said, I think Christians pray and pray yes. and pray and pray and pray. And when nothing happens, you begin to get some... I think people get either some warped looks at God. Yes. Because you get you like, what is wrong with you? Yes. Like, put it on me rather than on my daughter. Have you ever had that thought? Oh, my word. I don't know how many times we said that. <laughs> yeah. How many times we said yeah. that Kevin would get at her bed and he would get on his knees and cry out to God, give it to me. God, give it to me. Please just give it to me. We so it was frustrating said. him because he was raised believing in miracles. Yes. But one wasn't happening for someone he'd have died for. That's right. That's exactly right. Wow. That's turmoil. It was turmoil. It was agony. So how many years did this go on for? She was nine when this miracle happened? It did. It was nine. So she started at four, and then she was nine when it happened. So about five years. So five years of this, day in and day out. What did your, did you actually struggle with your faith? You know, there I... There moments? There was moments. There it was were, like, okay, God, if you're even there, like... Mm -hmm. I went through moments where I didn't know what to pray, so I didn't pray. Because right. I was afraid if I pray today that you would do this for Annabelle and you don't do it, I don't want to be mad at you. So right. if I don't ask it and you don't do it, I can't be angry at you. So let's just not talk about it. And so that was really where my relationship with him was. I would thank him and be grateful for him, but I didn't talk to him about Annabelle for a while. So the guilt must be pretty high, too, mm -hmm. in your relationship with God, because there's definitely anger, because there's unresolved uh, issues between you and God. Yes. And you got the rest of your family. Where are you going to go for help here? So it's a mess. It is a mess. And, you know, it was Kevin's mom, and she's such an amazing Christian, such a godly woman. And my parents are amazing Christians, and they were such guidance for us and prayed over us and prayed for us that I feel like if it wasn't for the prayers of them and so many friends, so our church body, I don't know where we would have ended up. And it was that wow. guidance, I feel like, kind of brought us through the darkness. But there was darkness for me. I went through a depression. I went through a terrible depression. During this time? During that time. It How was would horrible. you handle a depression and all this? I can only say by the saving grace of God. I don't know how I did. It was dark and terrible, and I, I made it. I made it to the other side. We're going to take a break right here, and then when we come back, let's unpack this story. I think people need to get a sense of just the heartache, the darkness, the turmoil that people are in, because it makes miracles pretty special when they happen, and this one is like bizarre. It's extraordinary. It it's off the top. So we'll be right back, and we'll talk about it. We'll be right back with people. And then it hit me, and I said, where is Annabelle? And they both pointed to the base of this cottonwood tree, and they said, she's in the tree. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource.
Get social with Leon Fontaine. Follow him on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. With instant access through any mobile device, you can stay up to date with the latest news, comment on your favorite episodes, and watch insider sneak peeks. Bonus videos, inspirational posts, and practical teaching are just clicks away. Spirit Contemporary Social Media. Get social with Leon Fontaine. Welcome back. My guest today is Christy, a mom who got an amazing miracle. We're going to talk about it right now, but you need to get hold of this book, Miracles from Heaven. All right, so let's unpack what happened on that day, or where do you want to start with this miracle? So <clears throat> I feel like it needs to start with our last, what we thought, well, we didn't know it was our last trip to Boston for, for treatment. Annabelle um, was admitted. We weren't expecting it. She got very sick on the way, they admitted her. Annabelle had decided she was done. She wanted to die and go to heaven and live with Jesus where there is no pain. And she told me that. She literally looked at you and said, I'd rather go to heaven. She said, I want to die. And I want to go ahead and live with Jesus. And I was devastated because she stopped fighting. She wouldn't eat. She wouldn't drink. She would only get out of the bed for the restroom. I'm dying was she, serious. Yes, she was done. She'd given up. They sent in child psychologists after acupuncture therapists. They put in every person they could, a child life specialist to get her to get out of that bed and play and live. She wouldn't fight. So what happened then? The family flew in? Kevin flew in and surprised us with the, the other two girls. And Abby said, Annabelle, show me the playroom. And Annabelle said, um, no, I don't want to. And she said, oh, no, you're going to show me the playroom. Get out of that bed. And she did. And she rallied. And the doctors were shocked. And they said, get her out of here. But don't leave Boston. But get her out of here. And so we talk about in the book what we did during that time. She spent a lot of time on Kevin's shoulders being carried through Boston. Um, but we got her home, and she rallied. So we're at home, and I'm trying to make sense of our life, trying to do laundry. You know, and what we wanted to do was for New Year's get Annabelle with other family. And so we had decided to go to Corpus, where Kevin's nanny lives. And so I was doing laundry, packing suitcases, and Abby and Adeline were doing what they love to do, is climb trees on our property. <laughs> and so Abby came in and said, Anna, please get off the couch and climb trees with us. And Annabelle at first said no, and so she, she did. And so they began to climb trees, and they're playing, and I'm going back to doing what I was doing. And a few hours, well, not a few hours, but probably about 30, 45 minutes later, Abby comes in hysterical that Annabelle has fallen in a tree. Well, my brain said, well, she climbed a little too high. Maybe her foot got caught. And she's needing help working her way down. But Abby was hysterically drawing me outside. So I get out there, and I'm standing, and we have this massive trees on our property, and one of them is a massive cottonwood tree. And I'm looking at this massive tree, and I'm saying, where is Annabelle? And I'm looking around, and Abby said, she's in the tree. And little Adeline, who was seven at the time, found a metal pipe, and she is digging flying dirt at the base of this tree. And I said, baby, what are you doing? And she said, Anna can't breathe. I'm getting her out, Mommy. And then it hit me. And I said, where is Annabelle? And they both pointed to the base of this cottonwood tree, and they said, she's in the tree. And so I, she was up this tree. So, it's a hollow tree. Exactly. Ahead, so no. So what happened was <clears throat> Abby convinced Anna to climb this tree, and they climbed this tree, and they ended up 30 feet in the air, sitting on a branch that jutted out, and they were just sitting there talking when the branch began to crack and give way. So Abby, brilliant, brilliant sister, in order to get Anna down to safety, said, "Anna, you go inside this little hole, which was left over from another branch that had fallen." And she said, you go inside that hole, and you um, just duck inside, and then I will uh, climb down, and then I'll help you get down. Well, the hole was actually uh, the corridor that ended up being what Annabelle went through to fall 30 feet head first. And she was entombed in the base of a 30-foot drop inside a hollowed-out cottonwood tree. 30 feet straight down, head first. Yes. So was there any room to flip around? No, she couldn't flip, but she hit her head three times, she said, on the way down, and the third one knocked her out. So she's out head first, 30 feet, and there's no way at her except 30 feet up where the hole is. You got it. 
Oh, man. So then how did you, did you climb the tree and look down, or what did you do? No. I, did, I don't know how. Abby was like a monkey. She had crazy spider monkey features. All of a sudden, she was just like up that tree, and then she would look in and scream. She's not moving. She's not responding. She could see her. She could see her if she shined a flashlight down on her, which she had grabbed. Abby was just amazing. And so I called Kevin. Who else do you call? Your superhero, which is Kevin. So I called <laughs> yeah. him, and he was home in like three minutes. I mean, he was there, and he thought the same thing. Oh, she's just fallen a bit and needs help getting out. Well, then he realized after going up a ladder, no, she called 911. And so we did, and the firefighters, same thing. Where's the little girl stuck in the tree? And then they realized the reality, and they began to just go into action. And they were brilliant, and the paramedics were so brilliant. Okay, walk me through this. I'm kind of interested. What did they do? Cut the tree down, or did they? Oh, no, because the tree was beginning to crumble. So they could, it was sweet because it was literally hollow, a hollow case. So it could have, if they cut it, it could just collapse and pierce her or hurt Exactly. Her. So what they did was they um, lowered ropes down into animal. They made um, loops out of ropes, out of fireman ropes, and they lowered them down to Annabelle. And they yelled and yelled and yelled to her, but she didn't respond. And they said, we, we can't get her out. We can't send anybody down. We don't know how to get to her. But they kept thinking and thinking. And they kept yelling to her. All of a sudden, they, they yell, she's responding, she's responding. Praise God, Annabelle stirred, looked up, grabbed the rope, and followed their instructions to a T. And she assisted in her own rescue. She did everything they said to do, put her legs in the rope, meticulously and helped get them help them get her out of the tree okay so they got her out now that that's a cool story <clears throat> but it goes beyond this way beyond she so went to the hospital for we a checkup hospital yes because they said prepare yourself mom we've never had anybody fall 30 feet and not suffer paralysis or broken bones so we get there and they do CT scan after sonogram after x-ray and Annabelle walked away with scrapes bruises and uh, wet and muddy, and that was it. Nothing wrong with her. Nothing wrong with her. So, how did you discover there was some changes in her, with her? Was it just right away, or did it take time, or keep going? I'm interrupting you, but no, no. <laughs> so, I was prepared because life in a hospital meant you you stay, you you make it your home for a while. So, Kev stayed the night. I took a bunch of clothes up there, preparing to stay, um, and then Kevin said no. This is the last place she needs to be. We got to get her home. We got to get her out of here. And in the book, we kind of talk a little bit more about where we are, but we're in the truck and we're traveling. And Annabelle turns to me absolutely out of the blue and she says, You know, Mommy, I went to heaven when I was in that tree. This is the same day it happened? The next day. The next day. Wow. And I always say that I wish I had something brilliant and profound that I could look back that I said to her. And all I said to her when she said that to me, was really nothing profound, nothing brilliant, nothing I can go, oh, I'm so proud that I pulled something wonderful. No, mm -mm. I just said, really? And um, so she went on to tell me that she sat on Jesus' lap and that she told him she wanted to stay because there was no pain there. And he said, I know you do, Annabelle, but I have plans for you on earth that you cannot fulfill in heaven. But when the firemen get you out, there will be nothing wrong with you. And I said, Annabelle, again, putting God in a box and being closed-minded, I said, Annabelle, isn't God so good? There was nothing wrong with you from the fall. Well, one day turned into another day into another day. We began to realize that Annabelle did not need this medication because her body wasn't showing the symptoms and the needs for it. So we would wean her off of that one. She started eating? What was it? What happened? She was eating. She was playing. She was going to the restroom normally. She um, was on 10 medications when she fell in that tree. Um, we began to wean her off one medication after another. Today, Annabelle is on zero medications. She has been released from the care of her pediatric gastroenterology specialist. They say she's asymptomatic. She does not show symptoms of having pseudo-obstruction motility disorder or antral hypomotility disorder. All right, so those are the legal sides of this. Basically, as mom and dad watching this little girl, she's healed now. She's healed. This, this stuff is all gone. That's right. And she's a normal little girl playing for yes. the first time in nine years of her life. Yes.
So she's in sixth grade. She'll be in seventh grade next year. She's in the band. She plays the French horn. <laughs> she loves it. Um, <laughs> she's pretty good old. Oh, she's wonderful. She's so much fun. She thinks the word chicken is hilarious. And um, she loves it when, you, I mean, she picked the French horn because it has the same word in it as French fry. Like, she's hilarious. <laughs> she is living life fully, eating, drinking, amazing. When she was in heaven, she sat in Jesus' lap. Does she have a lot of descriptives when she talks about it, or is it just kind of more hazy? Was there an angel involved? There was. God so saw an angel? God sent an angel. He said, Annabelle, um, I'm going to send an angel to stay with you and to light the tree for you. And she said that she woke up in the tree and she heard the fireman's voices calling from far away and that there was an angel with her. And she said the angel was small, like the size of a fairy. And, wow. and she just goes on to talk about what the angel um, and experiences that she had with the angel. And she talks about how um, they just sat there. And I said, did you speak? Did you talk? What did you say? And she said, we didn't speak. We just sat there peacefully together. Like, that's ridiculous. You don't talk to an angel. <laughs> and I'm like, well, excuse me. I'm not as versed in this as you yeah, are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, so. This has been a couple of years. So this is a proven miracle. Yes. Like, how many years? Is it three, four years ago? Yes, it's been three. Almost four. Almost four years now that this miracle has proven she is still healthy. She is still whole. Yes. And uh, so God is using you guys. You wrote, wrote the book. Now, what is she like with having gone through this stuff? Is uh, there something about her that yes. she's a little more mature than mm -hmm. others? She, what's she like? So, you know, I always heard people use the expression that someone has an old soul, and I yeah. didn't ever know what it mean, meant. Well, now I know. She has an old soul. She looks at things in a way that I tell her all the time, Annabelle, I long to have a heart like yours. She loves people in, in a way that that I, I want to love people, people who have hurt her or hurt us or said things, especially in this journey that have been harmful, Annabelle just prays for them. And she says, they'll get it one day, Mommy. God's working <laughs> on them. I mean, she just, she, know, she knows. She has a sense about her. She doesn't worry about things of this world. Wow. That's amazing. Thank you for being with us today and sharing this story. It's amazing how when God does something for somebody, it just brings hope to so many others who are watching today and just maybe that could be a similar or could be a completely different circumstance that you don't give up hope no. time can be a real sometimes pain and an enemy as you as you keep walking but that's what hope and faith is about is just just keep believing and, and stay inspired get around people read your bible stay close to god and yes. keep trusting that something's going to change yes exactly thank you for being with us thank you for having me we'll be right back Let's do Benjamin Franklin. An investment in knowledge pays the best teachers. interest. Okay, listen to your teachers. Love you. Love you. It's a good life. <laughs> it's a good life. It's a good life. When Anna got sick, I just couldn't understand it. Why was this loving little girl going through this? I think your daughter is lactose intolerant. Acid reflux. Everything looks okay. Everything's fine. Everything is not fine. There's something wrong with our little girl. Mrs. B, you need to calm down. I'm not leaving this hospital until I know what's wrong with my daughter. Unfortunately, the tests confirm that she's very ill. There is currently no cure for Anna's condition. Doctor, please, this is our little... Girl. I'm scared, Mom. Me too. We're not giving up. Like a small boat on the ocean. We need a solution. We need it now. And we'll get it. How? By not losing our faith. Like how a single How long have you been married? 14 years. Free her from this. Might only have one back. Can you even hear me? I can make an explosion. You're telling me that when this baby girl fell 30 feet, she hit her head just right, and it didn't kill her, and it didn't paralyze her. It healed her. Yes. Well, that's impossible. This is a little hard to believe. There's a lot of people out there that are just looking for publicity. 
A lot of people think we're crazy. You either roll with it or you get rolled on. He told me I'd be fine. Who told you you'd be fine? I'm so glad that you were watching the program today. You know, heaven is so real. It's one of the major reasons why there's such an urgency and a push in this hour to reach people with the spirit contemporary gospel of Jesus. You see, when people make a decision for Christ, their names are entered in the Lamb's book of life so that when they die, heaven is their home for eternity. Hell is also real. It's made for the devil and his angels, but everything that he owns, he takes with him. That is why it's so powerful, it's so crucial that this ministry continues to reach out from language to language, from country to country in a spirit contemporary way. Why don't you join up with this family, this ministry, and help us to touch people people and make sure that eternity is going to be spent in heaven. For your gift of $45 or more, I want to send you this gift and say thank you with God Still Does Miracles. It is the most encouraging series that walks you through how simply miracles can happen and shares story after story that are just going to take your faith to a whole new level and you're going to believe God for that breakthrough that you need. Go to your phones right now and for a gift of $45 or more, you're going to reach people for Christ in the countries around the world. God bless you and thank you. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on Islamic television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support, because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth, which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe. Your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. Tomorrow, Dr. Jason Peters joins Leon to discuss how to effectively share the gospel with the Muslim community. As an extremist, an Islamic extremist, you believe that your God wants you to die for him. Well, let me tell you, uh, our God died for us.